getting better at that. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful people. Um, this is going to be quick because, as you can hear, probably I had a cold uh, hurricane or tropical storm. Henri whipped through here, screwed with everything. Especially if you're a neurological screw up, such as myself, Grindel is not a happy camper. Everything around here is hot, it's humid, it's sticky. I gotta turn all the fans off in order to record, so we're gonna go quick with this. Sorry about that. Anyways, this week I wanted to introduce you to the owl. Now, he's not in the actual strip this week, which is a little bit odd, but I told you that I would show him to, you know, show the characters to you as they actually appeared on the kelp bed. Now, actually, the thing about the K-hole, that's very true because somebody likes to go on walkabout. And when he goes on walkabout, it'll be a few days and we notice he's missing, go looking for him, invariably he's underneath the bed, which is where the idea of the K-hole came from. So, just so you know the origins of the whole story, uh, thank you once again for watching this and I, that's it. Love y'all. Bye. So right off the bat, one of the things you'll notice is I uh, changed masking fluid. I decided to try out PBO, I believe it's called. And instead of the Windsor and Newton, because I'd read good things about I read some bad things, and people who were saying it uh, tainted their paper. I didn't have that problem. It is a lot stickier than Windsor and Newton. You're definitely going to want to soap up your brush for this one. And this week I decided to try out Arches hard pressed watercolor paper. It's a little more expensive, but you know what? That's what the whole point of this was to experiment, try out different techniques, mediums, see what happens. So uh, based on the results, I'd actually, I'd recommend it. Maybe a little bit pricier, but if you buy it in the nine by 12 sheets, it's actually not that bad. And it takes a lot of abuse doing the wet on wet. You can't actually see it, but later on in this video, it's kind of off screen, but I'm using a small squirt bottle to try to hit it even harder to see how far I could push it before it bloomed. It took quite a lot of abuse before it would bloom out. So color me impressed. And once again with the uh, table salt. And I really like the results of uh, putting table salt on the wet paint on this arches. It gave it a nice kind of like air flower look.
And this week I've been listening to a lot of Ilion Radik, so that's why you have the longer drone pieces this week. I'll put a link to a short documentary about her. She's one of the pioneering electronic artists that Lately, she's starting to get more recognition, but for a long time, it was really hard to find information about her. But I'd recommend taking any of her albums, putting on a good pair of headphones, and just laying back with it. So the uh, fleshy parts of Chico, I used uh, uh, gouache, Windsor Newton gouache, and I hit that with some uh, Renaissance burnt sienna to give it kind of the fleshy tones. It's just what I had available at the time, so kind of DIYing it. I'm sure it'll change over time.
The one other change that I made this week besides the uh, masking fluid was I switched over to uh, 3M painter's tape, scotch painter's tape, the blue stuff. It works way better than what they're selling as artist tape nowadays. I mean, the lines are so clean and everything. I probably will just use the rest of the artist roll tape that I have to tape down rulers, that type of thing, because seriously, working on paper, the difference is night and day. And once again with the ruling pen, which one day I will master, probably 90 years or so. Got lots of love for the old school cats that understood these things. <laughs>